There's gonna be an eclipse in the US on the 21st of August and it's going to be absolutely awesome. Total solar eclipses are really rare and because most of Earth's surface is covered by water, we don't get to see the large number of the ones that even happen. So here are our top 10 facts in anticipation of what will probably be the most viewed solar eclipse ever. Hi, I'm Adva and I'm gonna dive right into the top 10 today. This will be the first solar eclipse in the continental United States in 38 years. The last one occurred on the 26th of February 1979 and the next one will be in 2024. The last time a total solar eclipse back home in India was on the 22nd of June 2009. Number 2. Solar eclipses are of two types, partial and complete. The moon, directly between the sun and the earth, casts a shadow on our planet. If you're in the dark part of that shadow called the umbra, you'll see a total solar eclipse. But if you're in the light part, you call the penumbra, you'll see only a partial eclipse. Number three, a solar eclipse only happens at new moon. The moon has to be between the sun and earth for a solar eclipse to occur. The only lunar phase when this happens is the new moon. But then why doesn't one happen every new moon? Which brings me to number four, the moon's orbit is inclined. The reason we don't get an eclipse every new moon is that the moon's orbit tilts 5 degrees to the Earth's orbit around the sun. Astronomers call the two intersections of these paths nodes. Eclipses only occur when the sun lies at one node and the moon is at its new moon phase, or full for lunar eclipses. During most lunar months, the sun lies either above or below one of the nodes and no eclipse happens. Number 5. Eclipse totalities are of different lengths. The reason total phases of solar eclipses vary in time is because the Earth is not always at the same distance from the Sun and the Moon. And this means that the Earth-Sun distance can vary by 3% because of the eccentricity of Earth's orbit. The Moon-Earth distance can also change by 12%. The result is that the Moon's apparent diameter can range from 7% larger than the Sun to 10% smaller than the Sun, making each solar eclipse unique and different. Number 6. It's all about magnitude and obscuration. Astronomers categorize each solar eclipse in terms of its magnitude and obscuration. And I don't want you to be confused when you encounter these terms. The magnitude of a solar eclipse is simply the percent of the sun's diameter that the moon covers during maximum eclipse. The obscuration, on the other hand, is the percentage of the sun's total surface area covered at maximum. Here's an example. If the moon covers half the sun's diameter, the magnitude is 50% because half the diameter is 50% of the sun's diameter. But the amount of obscuration, the area of the sun's disk that the moon blots out, will only be 39.1% because of the square law that radius and area follow. Number 7. Solar eclipses occur between Saros cycles. Similar solar and lunar eclipses recur every 6,585.3 days, that is 18 years, 11 days, and 8 hours. Scientists call this length of time a Saros cycle. Two eclipses separated by one Saros cycle are similar. They occur at the same node of the Moon's orbit, and the Moon's distance from Earth is nearly the same, and they happen at the same time of the year. Number 8. Nighttime in the middle of the day? Depending on your surroundings, as totality nears you, you may experience really strange things. You'll notice a resemblance to the onset of night, though not exactly. Areas much lighter than the sky near the sun lie all around the horizon, since that area is not in totality. Shadows look really different and weird. Usually, any breeze will dissipate and birds will stop chirping. It might even feel a temperature drop. Number 9. Totality is safe to look at. During the time that the moon's disk covers that of the sun, it is safe to look at the eclipse. In fact, to experience the awesomeness of the event, you must look at the sun without a filter during totality. Though I strongly suggest you buy eclipse glasses for all times other than the totality, because looking at the sun is dangerous to say the least. And finally, number 10. Yes, 
The sun is a lot bigger than the moon. Our daytime star's diameter is approximately 400 times larger than that of the moon. What a coincidence then that it also lies roughly 400 times further away. You could say that the odds are astronomical. <laughs> this means that both disks appear to be the same size. So those are our top 10 facts about the eclipse. If you have a chance to see this amazing event, please, please take this once in a lifetime opportunity to see something truly spectacular. There's a list of places that are within the line of totality in the description down below. So you can see the eclipse in all its magnificence. All the info for this video came from an article on astronomy.com written by Michael E. Backich. There's a link to it down in the description below as well. There are a lot of other cool facts about solar eclipses that I didn't mention in this video. Do you have any more? Tell us down in the comments below. Hey, we hope you found this video fun slash informative slash useful. If you want more cool content, click up here to watch a video randomly chosen by YouTube's algorithm. If you want to subscribe, click up here. We'll see you in the next video, but until then, good night, sleep tight, and don't let the CMX like hilarious bite.